Hi there, it's Paul in Perth here, and this is our first video in the parent-child bonding set. Uh, this is my good friend Rachel, Hi. and uh, we are going to model for you some um, what we believe is healthy behaviour uh, between what would be a, um, an adult father and, a, and an adult daughter. And a story has happened, so Rachel, perhaps you could tell the backstory of how we got here. Yeah, so we have um, we had a wing mirror on our car damaged in a car parking lot, and I knew Paul um, as a family friend, and I knew that he had a garage in Serpentine, and I just approached him and said, hey, can you recommend the best place for me to get it repaired? And he said, well, I'll do you better. I'll teach you how to get the part, and then um, I'll teach you how to repair it on the car yourself. And so the, here we are. Yeah, so here we are. So in the next shot, we'll be out by the car. It's an Mitsubishi ASX. And um, actually, when we get out there, I'll, we'll take you through the whole thing because it actually started, the very first instruction I gave to Rachel was, what's the paint code? And I first thing I had to do was explain to Rachel how to find the paint code. So let's go out to the car and let's cover that first question. Okay, so the first part of solving this problem was to find out what the paint code of the vehicle was. And the first thing I needed to do was explain to Rachel what a compliance plate looks like and where to find them. Now they're in several places, but they do tend to be in door frames. So Rachel will now show you where the compliance plate is on this ASX Mitsubishi and she'll show you what the paint code is. Okay, so I was told to check on the inside of the, both sides of the driver's side and passenger side of the car. So I found it here. This is the compliance plate. Um, and it says paint, the code is D06. So that is the colour paint used on this car. Okay, and you will find that every single car, it doesn't matter what make or model, whether it's European or Japanese or whatever, will have a compliance plate somewhere and it will list the paint code on it. It will also list the, uh, the month and the year of manufacture. So this vehicle is an April 2018. So what we know at this point is we could go to a wrecker and say, hey, I've got an April 2018 ASX Mitsubishi and I've got a paint code of D06. And if you quickly have a look over on the other side, we can have a look at the problem. So if you just come around here, this is the problem. This is what happened in the car park. So this has been smashed and it, unfortunately it's also damaged the shell. And that was why we needed the paint code because I wanted to make sure we didn't have a yellow a yellow window on a blue car. So I'm just gonna move the car because it's raining now and we're gonna get on with the actual repair. Okay, firstly, I do wanna apologize for the road noise. It is raining here in Perth today. We're just gonna to have to deal with it and carry on. So what happened was, Rachel, um, with now that she knew her um, make, model, year and paint code, Rachel was able to go and get a replacement um, mirror from a wrecker and we're about to do the install. And I absolutely promise you, I have not pre-told Rachel how to do this repair. This is genuinely, if, if Rachel was my daughter and I was teaching her for the first time as her father, this is genuinely, you are now watching it happen for the first time. Okay, okay so we have some tools and we're gonna introduce them as the job goes on. Because I haven't done this exact job, I actually don't know exactly what tools we're gonna to need. So we'll introduce them as we go and as I instruct Rachel. This is called a trim tool. They cost about, they come in a set that's about $5 on eBay and they're just called a plastic trim tool kit. The very first thing Rachel needs to do to change this wing mirror is remove this panel here by placing the trim tool in behind it and levering off. So first job over to you, Rachel. Okay. So just here? Yep, perfect. Yep, okay, very good and just place that off to the side for now. Now you'll notice that behind here, there are three bolts. I know from experience, because almost all cars, these are 10 mil, and those three there, you can probably only see the top one. I might just close the door slightly to show you. So that one that you can see there is that one there. There are a second and third bolt, and they're below the door skin line. So that's Rachel's daughter in the background. She's a lovely, lovely girl. Might even, might even show her to you later. <laughs> what we need to do is we need to remove this door skin. And to do that, looking at this door, there's two major things we need to do. There's going to be a screw behind here, and there's gonna be a screw in there, and we're gonna to have to take off this console. So Rachel, if you grab a small to medium flat dead, that's the one with the yellow handle, yeah, that one will be fine. 
Now, just come in here. Can you see that trim there? Put, yep. put the flat head just behind it and perfect. Yep, perfect. And just leave it outwards and get ready to catch. Oh. Yep. That's Thank fine. You it. <laughs> yeah. So we've now taken this little trim out there and you'll see that we've now exposed a Phillips head screw. So if you grab a green handled Phillips head um, screwdriver and if you undo that single screw there. Right, and again, this is a magnetic screwdriver, so you may not actually have to catch the screw. The screwdriver should actually hold it magnetically. Yeah, or you can grab it with your hand, that's fine. Now, it's a good idea to, to, um, to keep these collected together. We're not going to be creating a whole heap of parts, but if, we, if there was going to be 20 or 30 bits, I'd be creating little buckets and putting these in little buckets. Because there's only going to be a tiny number of parts, I'm just going to put those off, off to one side. We know where they are. Now, Rach, mm -hmm. there, you can see that little tab there, mm -hmm. and I'll just grab the camera from the camera cameraman, and I'll just show you. Down there is a little cover. So what Rachel needs to do is she needs to use a flat head to pop it up. And then underneath there, there's gonna be a Phillips head screw. And Rachel needs to undo that little Phillips head screw. So you've got the cover up. Okay, perfect. And then grab your Phillips head and undo that Phillips head screw. Fantastic, yeah, it is magnetic. Alrighty. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get this uh, electrical window um, console off. These are, you need to be careful with them. I don't know whether to talk to camera or Rachel, but I'll talk to camera, you can just pay along, pay attention. Um, when you use metal on plastic, there's always a chance that you're gonna scratch the plastic because metal is harder than plastic. This this unit here is going to be pressed down and we need to put upwards pressure on it so the safest way to do that is with a plastic tool so Rach what I want you to do see this line here yep I need you to softly see how that's creating a little gap yep and then put the plastic in okay. and then lever up so use that very sparingly Yep, perfect. And then use that to, to widen the gap out. And as soon as you can, stop using the screwdriver because the screwdriver will just damage things. All right, and then start levering up. You should start hearing pops. Yeah, if you pop it at this end as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, that pop there was, was the one I was looking for. Okay. Now you should find that the rear end, I don't think there's any more screws there. That's coming up, Jet. That's coming up with its own cord, isn't it? Is that it going? Yeah. Okay. I might just do the last bit. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just work out what's going on here. Sorry. No, no, you're right. something under this black piece of plastic. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm, I don't want to break anything, obviously, um, and it's, it's mostly released, but I'm getting a little bit of tension back here, and plastic is one of those things that you just don't want to... The first thing you know is when you've broken it, put it that way, and I don't want to break this. So what we're going to do is I'll try and remove the skin uh, and see whether I can, I can actually leave that in place. Now to remove the skin, just to explain, there's pop studs all the way around the edge of this um, door skin. And what you do is you find a place, ah, oh, there it is. Okay, Rach, under here, mm -hmm. there's a place to put your fingers. Okay. And what I need you to do, and you, it, it takes a reasonable amount of force, mm -hmm. is you need to put fingers there, fingers there, Brace it with your knee yep. and pull backwards, and you will hear a relatively dramatic pop. Okay. That is normal. Okay. okay. All right. And here. So there, there. Yeah. yeah. And brace, brace with your knee, knee and pull back. Perfect. Perfect. That's exactly right. Okay. Yep. That exactly was what was meant to happen. 
Right. Now, at that point, we should be able to push the skin up and out. Okay, that's fine. And actually, as it's turned out, and genuinely, we did not rehearse this beforehand, now that we've done it, I realise I, we don't need to do any more here. Because remember, the only reason we're pulling this skin off is so that we could get to these other two bolts and the electrical connector. And we can, which means we can actually now pop that back down. That doesn't need to come off any further. So, Rach, uh -huh. I need you to undo that electrical connector by pushing in that tab and pulling it up. Perfect, yep. yep. And I'll make you up a 10 mil, and then I need you to undo those three 10 mils. Just let me make you up a 10 mil. All right, so there you go. Now, just to show, and um, if you don't know this, that's fine. This is, you need to learn it for the first time. With these tools, to reverse them, they often have a little, a little flick lever. Now, I need these to undo, which means I need them to rotate anti-clockwise. So I need that tool there. If it, I needed it to go the other way, to tighten up, I would flick that the other way and then it will go clockwise, okay? So these, these are called um, rat, ratchet spanners or ratchet wrenches, and that is completely normal. So that is ready to go. So if you want to undo those three 10 mils, yep. Yeah, probably do it by hand at the end there, that's perfect. Thank you. I'm sure that was an easier way to do this, but... <laughs> oh, no, you've pretty much done it perfectly. I kind of use my hands at the end just so I don't yeah, drop them. Yeah, that's okay, that's alright. There you go. Alright, so I'll hold on to those. Now, Rach, what I want you to do is grab the outside of the mirror and just wiggle it, and what you're going to find is at some point it'll go, it'll release, and you'll be able to pull it back towards you. Oh, there you go. There you go, all right? Well done, you've done half the job. Okay. So now, now it's just a reconstruction of everything else. So feed that, feed that piece of wire back through the hole that that came. Yep, and seat it so that the, all the holes line up. And I'll give you a trick just run one of these in by hand. So just, just get it started. You don't have to finish it, just start it. It's just so it holds it in place. Yep, great. And then do number two and number three. Have I lined it up properly on the outside? Yeah, if you line up the bolt holes, then the rest oh, okay. all, all lines up. Perfect. Getting there. Yep, good. <laughs> sort of. It is it is feeding in. Uh yeah, I just had to get the angle right. Yeah, there perfect. we go. Yep, okay, and just get the third one started. Proof that we haven't rehearsed this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you. Just as long as it started. Yeah, I'm just struggling on getting that one. That's all right. How about I get it started for yes, you? You please. hold that for a sec. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so what you needed to do yeah. is just basically just wriggle it around mm -hmm. until you get, there you go, you get it started. Thank now, you. I deliberately want to give this to you. Okay, that is now rotating the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how to make it rotate yes, the right I way? Yes, I need to put it this way. Yep, perfect. Okay, so do those three up.
Yeah, that's perfect. And that's the right amount of tightness, by the way. So tight enough that it's going to hold there, not so tight that you actually break the plastic. Yep, that sounds good. Thank you. Now, if you plug the plug back in. This is actually a really cool feeling being able to do this. There we go. Good. All right. Now we need to rehang the door skin. And the trick to rehanging a door skin is you need to think of it like a, like a hook. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically lift it up and we're going to hang it. So we've got this sill line here and the, the door skin itself, I can't turn around because of the, how we are positioned, but if you just trust me, it's like that. So we are going to be lifting up and just basically hanging it and we'll know that we've got it right when the outside um, weather strip lines up with the sill, uh, with the, uh, the top of the, the door skin. Okay. So do you want to hang it yourself? Or... Yeah, I'll give it yeah, a go. Yeah, have a go. All right. Yeah. yeah, just close that up. That's fine. All right. So I'm going to get that up and out yeah, of the that's way. Correct, yeah, that's correct, And I need to line up the top with yeah. the yeah. That. That's this side, this end is correct. Okay, this end's not. It actually might be. I think it actually is. I think it was like that before. And the way the way you can definitely tell. Okay, you can t give me your hands. Mm -hmm. Feel that tab there. Yeah. And can you feel how it's lined up with the hole in the door? Not really. <laughs> okay. Listen to the pop. Did you hear oh, that? Yes, okay. Right. So what you've got is these little press studs and you've got holes that the press studs go into. And if you've got it hung correctly, the studs line up with the holes so that when you click them, they pop in. Now, if that one's aligned, and I can tell the rest that's aligned, I should get pops all the way around, okay? So that whole thing is now back on, just like before. So that bit's done. Oh, that's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. It's actually amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's a good feeling, huh? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, look, you probably even know what the rest of the job is. Put it so, all back together now. Yeah, so put those two screws back from whence they came. That's actually, yeah, it's a really cool thing to think I just took a door off and fix something. Um, yeah, because you were going to take it to a mechanic, right? I was. Well, I didn't know any of this. I actually didn't even know that I could get a part from the um, a wrecker, and you went through that with me, and that was really, really cool to be able to do by myself. Yeah. Um, well, with help. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, and yeah, now I'm doing it myself. All right, so that screw goes in there and then that cover goes back on. I'll get out of your way. But it's definitely something that now that I know, I will think twice and, you know, see what else I can learn going forward with cars rather than just thinking like yeah. taking it to... And, and just as feedback, I used to run a, a um, mechanical garage if I was to quote on this job, I, and I guarantee you any mechanic would do the same, they quote one hour. So in Australian dollars, that would be about 100, 100 Australian dollars is what this job would have cost in a mechanics workshop, uh, which is about $70 US. And as you can see, it doesn't actually take an hour, but by the time, you'll need to do this as well. Oh, actually, this is a really good example. Remember how we were talking about the, um, the pop studs and the holes? This is when, when I banged the door. That's an example of one there. So to get this back on, I need to line up this pop stud with that hole. Well, I, I don't, because Rachel does. <laughs> so that's that popping sound when you heard me go pop. So Rach, if you can line up that yep. with that okay. and just give it a gentle nudge, okay. you'll find it'll, it'll go right back where it needs to be. Feels secure. Okay. And just for Rachel's information and everyone else's, when you ever finish a job, there's two things you want to do. One is have a look around your workspace and say, are there any missing leftover screws? It's like when you do IKEA furniture. If you've got a screw <laughs> left over, you've forgotten something. But I promise you, um, and there was very little stuff that we took out, we haven't missed anything. Uh, and the last thing is to test test it. Yeah. So if you want to put the key in the ignition and just test that the electric window goes in and out. I'm also going to check the indicator because the indicator's oh, on yeah, there. Yeah, check the indicator as well, that's right. So I'll have a look at that because, yep, so the indicator right. is flashing. So let's, I'll just grab the camera. 
So there you go. Rachel has successfully installed it. The indicator is working. And if you just want to do the mirror going in or out, just to prove that, whoops. Sorry. Yes, our mirror is working. Okay. So I'll hand the camera back. So there's an example uh, of um, something that a parent and a child can do. I absolutely believe that females can work on cars just as, well as, just as well as males can. So please, if you're female, please don't be put off by that just because you think it's what the boys do. Rachel's just shown you girls absolutely can do it, all right? Rachel picked it up straight away. And actually, I think you would say the job was actually not as hard as you thought. No, actually, I was really surprised. Um that a lot of it kind of it's just like a puzzle piece and once you kind of know where the yeah. pieces fit and stuff it's it's quite easy yeah and that is a lot of working on cars is like that i i often describe it as lego for adults mm. and a lot of your car is just like lego for adults these little covers that you took off and the screws it's just like lego really and what was stopping you from thinking you could do the job at the start is just the unknown yeah you didn't know how to do it you didn't know how to find the compliance plate and the paint code yeah and this is um what I would say is the joy that a parent can give to a child is just to go, here's something I know that you don't. Have it. And, and it's, it's a good feeling. It's yeah. A, I actually feel I'm yeah. quite proud of myself right now. I've never done anything like this before and um, didn't think I could do it. So, yeah, thank you, Paul. It's a really good feeling. You're most <laughs> welcome. And now I want to go and get Rachel's daughter because you might have heard a little baby cooing before. Yeah. And I want you to show, I want uh, the world to see Rachel's beautiful daughter because I hope that one day Rachel will teach her daughter how to do a job like this. So we'll just take a little break and we'll go and get the daughter. Oh my God, I did it. Did you see I did it? So here we are. So Rachel has completed the job and this is Rachel's beautiful daughter here. Currently a bit hungry, so. <laughs> yeah, isn't she lovely? So this is my idea of what a healthy parent-child relationship would look like. And here's an example, if you want to teach your kids uh, how to work on cars, maybe it's how to fix a wing mirror, but maybe it's something else. The important thing is though, pass on your knowledge to the next generation, because um, it, it's what parents are for. Parents are there to help their children and, and, and be good parents. So Rachel, that was my gift to you. Thank you so much, Paul. You're most welcome, and I hope one day you can pass it on to beautiful Nava here as well. Thank you from Paul in Perth. See you later.